told uh, five percent or less of the truth, uh, and that isn't very much to go on. That's one thing. Another thing is uh, you don't find very many people coming up here and, and letting you have hands-on experience. I'm going to try and do this to you. However, I do ask you to go out and do your homework and keep doing it. Don't necessarily believe in what I'm saying, but get out there and and talk to people. Whether it's just a couple of neighbors or friends or, or something, get out there and talk. Because one will tell two and two will tell four and then pretty soon you have a whole room full of people that are in the know. And then from there, uh, wonders can work. Well, other than that, as far as changing the black budget, uh, these clandestine programs, public opinion is only going to be that going to do that and it's going to take millions of us but we have to be informed and to do that we have to be doing what we're doing now gathering and talking and of course most of us are adults and can weed out fact from fiction most of us are responsible adults and know the difference between fact and fiction and how to use it or how to abuse it and so we therefore have to continue to keep studying and keep talking. If there's just me out there, and believe it or not, there aren't very many people like myself out there talking. Uh, I've given over 30 talks in the United States, Canada, Japan, um, uh, went over to England, kind of, well, went to Japan kind of illegal, came back the same weekend. Uh, they, they flew me in and out, but uh, gave a talk to a number of their execs, and they were very interested indeed. Now, if I was, uh, if this was all a bunch of poppycock and hooey and poo-poo, uh, I might, uh, I wouldn't be listened to, uh, be, be given an audience by these people, but evidently I have. But 13 attempts on my life since the first of this year. I there's a, a number of you ladies present, so I won't gore you out. But uh, Al has seen uh, some of the wounds, and there's a few other people that have been to a few of my other lectures, and they can attest that I have been shot, uh, I've been uh, run off the road, I've been uh, pushed off the road, I've been uh, mostly shot at, and that kind of thing like that but I've uh, uh, been in hand-to-hand -hand combat with some of these people and, I'm, and once again I'm not in the best of shape anymore but I still know how to handle myself. And uh, I'm just about ready to wrap things up here uh, but just basically wanted to give you an overview of, uh, of uh, uh, what's happening and uh, if we have any questions, we can uh, start asking a few questions. Okay, here's a gentleman way over here. Would you please speak up loud? Yes, uh, I was involved in a uh, in 1979 in August, late August of 1979. Uh, I was involved uh, working through Los Alamos Laboratories at Dulce, New Mexico. Uh, and uh, what's now known as the Alien Human War. 66 Secret Service agents, government workers, geologists and the like. I almost, got, I almost uh, bit the dust, I could have been number 67. Uh, uh, lost their lives that day because the government lied and uh, knew full well what was underneath. And what we'd done is out in the desert there we had, we had drilled four and period of a couple of days we drilled four of these holes that went down several thousand feet and uh, uh, one of these holes kept bringing up uh, dirty dust and uh, putrefying odors and broken off uh, broken off uh, machine bits and other kinds of things like that and boring machines as well as uh, lasers came up uh, damaged and of course there was a probe that was sent down and that came up totally missing and so people were sent down there and I was one of the people and uh, when I got down there of course the odor was and remember I was in a spacesuit type environment uh, 
All I had was a small tool belt with uh, uh, special sensors, a small rock hammer, and a, a rock sack for mineral specimens and other kinds of things like that. And I had my little pistol. And uh, being an engineer, I didn't have time to carry a big hunk of pistol like most of these Green Berets carry, stuff like that, Black Berets. I carried a little Walther PPK with a nine-shot clip. Now, as soon as I got down this hole, standing about from uh, from me to uh, this gentleman over here in the, in the front row, uh, about uh, ten or so feet away, seven feet away, something like that, was uh, uh, one of these seven-foot-tall stinking alien guys. And I didn't waste any time. I said, I'm not fiddling with you guys. And boom, away you go. And uh, uh, I had I was one of the rare few that had been allured that this may or may not occur uh, and uh, so uh, basically was uh, given ET training but a lot of these other people weren't and we were uh, in fact it was asked are there aliens in the area and of course the uh, big question was no um, and that was a big lie and of course 66 people died that day uh, I have a big hole in my chest. I lost a lot. My lung was literally burnt out of me. My fingers burnt off of me. My toenails burnt off of me. My skin was, uh, I was in ice and radiation isolation uh, therapy for 400 plus days. Uh, my bones were vitrified or burnt. Um, I was cooked. I managed to survive. they telling you something about it today. But other than that, I'm the only talking survivor. There are only two other survivors, and they're in nursing homes up in Canada. And Canada refuses to allow the United States officials to talk to them. They're in very bad shape indeed. One of them can't talk, and the other one doesn't want to. So they're, and they're, Cana they're regarded as Canadian heroes, and so uh, they're in, being kept by Canada. Okay, this fellow over here. Speak up loud. Actually, yes, there's uh, several. In fact, uh, as I was coming uh, to this uh, talk, uh, I uh, was uh, supposed to be here by plane, but uh, there was a subsequent foul-up. Um, anyway, I drove all the way and did it in one day. Uh, but uh, as I was coming over, over uh, up near Cheyenne, there I noticed the military, uh, Air Force, and the Army are building a so-called new, in quote, boot camp, prison camp, right up in Cheyenne, brand new. And I was here three months ago. I wasn't there. So it's something brand new. In Colorado, yes, there's about four underground uh, bases, one being at Denver International Air Base. Um, I call it Air Base, uh, Spaceport, or whatever you want to call it. Denver International Airport. No wonder your uh, luggage uh, uh, gets lost. There are eight levels underneath the airport uh, tarmac there, in quote tarmac or cement mac. Uh, uh, yeah, so those bags could be there uh, for a damn long time. Uh, why, uh, just imagine, uh, if this was instantly turned to agate uh, 30 or more million years ago, those bags could very well be the same way. <laughs> so yeah, there's, uh, there's a number of them. And uh, I wish I had a map with me. In fact, uh, in subsequent talks I'll have a map, uh, which will be put on the, on the overhead. In fact, my next talk I plan to have just that. Uh, I had planned to bring a map here and had all the latitudes and longitudes of all the bases, and I, I can't do that. That uh, would be uh, a nice jail sentence for me, so I, I didn't bring it. So, but other than that, I'll have that all researched for you. Uh, yes, this this woman. Yes, uh, there, as far as there being an inner earth, uh, a hollow earth or anything like this, no, I've never run into anything like that. Uh, however, uh, uh, Al Bielik, uh has been on uh, these uh, tunnel trains at better part of Mach 2, uh, going from coast to coast an hour and a half. 
uh, faster than any jet plane that we got, including uh, the SST uh, uh, or thereabouts, the same uh, rapid speed. Uh, 